Right now as you're watching this, two gold-plated LPs are shooting across outer space. Just let that sink in for a second. And in that second, those discs traveled an extra 11 miles on their voyage of space exploration. Etched in copper and sealed in aluminum cases, these golden discs will remain intact and intelligible for over a billion years. They could outlive us as a species. That may not matter much. After all, they were designed as time capsules of the human race, sonic and visual tapestries of life on Earth and human culture. Their intended recipients? Any intelligent extraterrestrial life form that happens to stumble upon them. If the aliens are able to decode its contents, they will find a vestige of our civilization and the human story. Whether we're still around for a follow-up introduction is another matter. Welcome to Intrigued Mind, and today we'll look at the Voyager Golden Records, launched aboard spacecraft Voyagers 1 and 2, milestones in humankind's centuries-long curiosity with space, exploration, and extraterrestrial life. Voyagers 1 and 2 were launched in 1977 by NASA. Voyager 2 was sent at a time when Jupiter and Saturn were aligned, with the goal of collecting valuable data and transmitting it back to Earth, while Voyager 1 was later launched to observe Uranus and Neptune. They have been in space for over 40 years now. In 2012, Voyager 1 entered interstellar space. That means it passed outside of the heliosphere, which is like a big bubble of space centered around the Sun. It crossed the heliopause, the boundary between matter originating from the Sun and matter from the rest of the galaxy. No man-made object and certainly no terrestrial species has traveled so far in history. Voyager 2 joined it six years later in 2018. Data and photographs from the cameras and instruments affixed to the craft have brought crucial discoveries on the solar system, with especially groundbreaking revelations on Saturn and Jupiter. The NASA scientists on the Voyager program had planned this. They knew the craft would gain enough velocity from Jupiter's gravity to escape the heliosphere. By 2025, the cameras and data instruments are expected to lose their power, and Voyagers 1 and 2 will orbit the Milky Way for thousands, millions, if not billions of years. That is, of course, unless they are intercepted by aliens or far-future humans beforehand. This was the rationale behind the brainchild of the great American astronomer Carl Sagan, a firm believer in the existence of alien life. He used the opportunity to offer a gift to any spacefaring life form that might be up to the task of deciphering the disk. A glimpse into human civilization, brimming with hope and optimism. This was not the first time Sagan thought of doing this. Five years earlier, in 1972, Sagan had orchestrated the Pioneer plaque, sent aboard Pioneers 10 and 11. The aluminum plaque showed several symbols, allowing any recipient to calculate the sun's location in the galaxy, and therefore to trace the galactic provenance of the craft. Also visible are the nude figures of a man and woman, which, by the way, even caused a stir for the Christian right in the U.S. who opposed, quote, using tax dollars to send pornography into space. Pornography or not, the recipient would be able to visualize the human form for both genders from space. In late 1976, Carl Sagan received permission from NASA to proceed with his idea for the record, an idea which was bred by his interest in musical technology. He gathered an ad hoc committee of astronomers, musicologists, engineers, and record producers to create this unique record. The aim was to present a sonic and visual history of our planet. While audio samples could be played through the record, photographs were encoded into the record's grooves so that they could be interpreted mathematically. The disc includes greetings in 55 ancient and modern languages. Hartelijke groeten aan iedereen. Herzliche Grüße an alle. Assalamu alaikum. Some of which were voiced by international delegates of the UN. All members of the committee were involved in the task of assembling music from all over the world. Ethnomusicologists were vital in assembling the more obscure records from the time. After combing his musical library, folklorist Alan Lomax is said to have dug up a unique record of Russian folk music, the only record of its kind in the U.S., before tossing it like a frisbee to the lead producer, Timothy Ferris. Ferris's fiancée, Andruyan, found an Indian Kyle record under a card table in the back of an appliance store. Western music, while more accessible for physical copies, was no less challenging. Chuck Berry's iconic track, Johnny B. Good, almost failed to make it onto the record. Over musical disagreements in the committee, Carl Sagan, for one, called the song, quote, awful. The Beatles' legendary number, Here Comes the Sun, was favored, and considered particularly fitting for two space probes originating from the solar system. However, the committee was unable to clear the rights. 
at least without paying almost triple of the total budget available for the entire disc's production. Beatles star John Lennon was actually invited to collaborate on the project, but had to leave the US for tax purposes. He did, however, recommend his sound engineer, Jimmy Iovine, co-founder of Beats by Dre, and producer for other big names like Tom Petty, Bruce Springsteen, and Dire Straits. Jimmy ended up working on the project. Classical music also featured alongside more modern genres, with pieces mainly restricted to Bach and Beethoven. This was deliberate. If any extraterrestrial recipient lacked hearing faculties or any concept of music, or operated in different frequencies, they could use mathematics to decipher the music. Bach and Beethoven's compositions are rich in repetition, symmetry, and musical patterns, making it easier to decipher them from a mathematical perspective. A sonic history of the Earth was included, from the volcanoes, earthquakes, and thunderstorms of the early Earth to the sounds of living creatures, including real-life whale song. The dawn of humans is marked by laughter, Sagan's to be precise, footsteps, and a heartbeat. This is followed by the sounds of fire, speech, and tools to represent advancements in the history of humanity. Later features include sounds of modern industry and transportation modes, as well as Morse code translated sonically, a human kiss, and a one-hour-long recording of brainwaves. The 115 images encoded in analog form also replicate the diversity of the recordings and are designed to show the extent of human accomplishment and activity, as well as life on Earth. Engineering and architectural legacies, depictions of the natural world, cultural scenes and artifacts, scientific breakthroughs, anatomy, visuals that evoke vibrant and cheery features of the Earth worth celebrating. These were designed to be seen by strangers, after all. Just like any greeting, we wouldn't want to telegraph the less flattering realities of our Earth. An official statement from President Jimmy Carter was even featured as an image, a message of hope, peace, and galactic union. The Mammoth Project was finished within an astounding six weeks. On the case's cover are symbols explaining how to decode the record's visual and sonic data. Also etched into the cover is information on the length of one side, which is about an hour how long the record will have been in existence using a chemical stopwatch, and information on the location of the solar system. Decrypting it might not be a piece of cake. We simply have no idea about the ease with which any extraterrestrial might decipher it, should one even discover one of the disks. We can only hope they're up to the task, and if we're still alive as a species, that they're non-hostile. In any case, Voyagers 2 and 1 were launched in August and September 1977, which meant liftoff for the galactic records, they are still traveling, now in interstellar space and outside the influence of the solar winds, but still a long way to go before exiting the magnetic range of the solar system. In the case of Voyager 1, this is estimated to happen 14,000 to 28,000 years from now, once the probe exits the Oort cloud. Chances of the disk's interception between now and then are slimmer than if they were to be intercepted after exiting the Oort cloud. But considering the size of the universe, the subsequently high odds of alien life, and the ever-expanding capacity of signal processing technologies, we could well find ourselves contacting alien life in our lifetimes. In any case, the Voyager disks will be traveling around the galaxy for the long foreseeable future. Messages of goodwill on the wealth of our planet's diversity and history, sent without any intention of it returning to its makers. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video, and leave your suggestions in the comments below.